Good evening. Welcome everybody, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Ellarigu, uh, namaskara. Welcome to day six of uh, YPS's Wildlife Week 2020. Uh, just before we start the whole program, a couple of housekeeping notes uh, for us to keep an eye on. One is uh, for those who are not members yet, you can become a member. All you have to do is log into ypsbengaluru.com. Or you can use your camera on your phone to scan the code and then it should uh, take you there. Uh, second point is uh, you saw the number scroll below. Uh, this number along with uh, uh, the combination of the website can give you options to send us your feedback. Uh, you've been watching us for the last five to six days. Uh, last day for the wildlife week being tomorrow. You can please let us know your comments, your suggestions. And any scope, any 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 points that you want to uh, talk to us about, tell us about, 
and uh, you know you can do this on the uh, numbers that you saw below uh, feedback is good feedback helps us improve and that is the main reason okay so today's guest and presenter is uh, Sri Sachin Rai. Uh, he's a photographer par excellence. He's an entrepreneur. He's an environmentalist. He's a discoverer too, and um, you know many many more roles that he plays in his uh, in his life as of today. He will talk about understanding composition, right? Uh, what we will do uh, once Sachin is done is Satish. Uh, sorry, once I'm done, Satish is going to introduce us to again a stalwart of wildlife. And come back to Mr. Sachin to uh, start his presentation, followed by Q&A in the end. Uh, please hold on to your questions uh, to, to, to till about the one hour mark, say around 6.30, and then let it rip once uh, we cross 6.30 mark. So we'll collect all these questions and ask them towards the end of the program. So without further ado, over to you, Mr. Satish, President of YPS. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and namaskara to all. Friends, today is the sixth day of uh, uh, the final week of uh, Wildlife Week this year. And today we have a fantastic uh, presenter, the star of the day, Mr. Uh, Sachin Rai with us. Before uh, welcoming him, I would like to welcome all the guests, the members, and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Youth Photographic Society. Youth Photographic Society, from past many years, we have been uh, conducting this Wildlife Week and also we conduct uh, uh, wildlife photography competitions during this week. And uh, just uh, we concluded with a wildlife uh, competition for our members and many of them have won awards for fantastic images. And uh, as usual, uh, we dedicate each webinar to the stalwart of photography uh, particularly, uh, we are very happy that uh, today we are dedicating this webinar to none other than Sri O.C. Edwards. As all of you know, Sri O.C. Edwards, uh, uh, one of the pioneers in uh, bird photography, the father of uh, Indian bird photography, I can say. And uh, here you can read more about his uh, uh, achievements in uh, wildlife photography. And I'm very happy that uh, our club, Youth Photographic Society, have dedicated a about uh, three pages in our journal uh, under the headlines of Legends of Karnataka. And you can read more about his uh, uh, story, about his life story, about wildlife and other things. And as I said, uh, Sri Osi Edwards was also the guru of uh, Sri T.N. Imperiuma. And uh, Sri TNA Perumal and uh, O.C. Edwards, they were going together for bird photography. And uh, uh, I have been uh, hearing a lot many stories about Edwards through the mouth of Mr. TNA Perumal, how, uh, how uh, rigid he was and uh, how strict he was during the photography. And also, I would like to enhance one thing about the, uh, Mr. O.C. Edwards is that I think he is the first person who used remote uh, tig trigger, that is uh, air, uh, air release uh, remote trigger uh, for action pictures. In fact, in those days, nothing was available, no technic technology was available. Under such conditions, she O.C. Edwards, he had uh, uh, invented his own technique of uh, taking action pictures of uh, birds uh, using air release. And the, this was uh, very often uh, was told by Sri uh, TNA Perumal also. And uh, O.C. Edwards was also the first and foremost person in wildlife photography who, who used hide technology. I mean, it may, may not be it is a technology, but it's a technique of uh, wildlife photography as such. So he used a hide in the night time to capture a leopard. So just... Um, uh, I was. I really wonder, in case if he was now, he, if he was there, how he would have taken many more uh, award-winning images. So uh, uh, that's about uh, Sri Edwards. And uh, uh, now I welcome my good friend, Mr. Sachin Rai, the uh, wildlife photographer par excellence. In fact, uh, uh, Sachin Rai. Uh, he is a little bit 
uh, about some of the uh, very well known wildlife photographers because of his compositions in wildlife not only compositions in fact uh, the way he uh, approaches the uh, animals and compose the image just in particular situations and later on the most important factor for a photographer is processing you must see how mr sachin rai processes his images top quality processing and each and every images of his you can see the uh, real colors coming out of the uh, pictures the true colors of the animals and birds coming out of the images that is the quality that one needs in uh, photography so sachin rai welcome to you and uh, to know more and more about uh, mr sachin rai i request my good friend mr uh, srinath narayan to introduce sri sachin rai the star of the day all to you mr srinath Oh my so uh, my apologies uh, gentlemen ladies and gentlemen i had the, my microphone on mute murphy is always with us sometime or all the times as a marker of this week's uh, wildlife week festivities we have with us sri sachin rai who can be attributed to being one of the most astute wildlife photographers of this generation sachin's mantra for wildlife photography is definition of wildlife versus portrait of wildlife therein lies the difference in his images not just a snapshot of a species or an environment or a particular situation but more of a study of all the factors around the con and contributing to the subject he is trying to photograph he espouses the <clears throat> mantra of being a naturalist first and a photographer second sachin a mumbaiker by birth comes from a middle class dombivali family a commerce student in the mid 90s he was drawn into the dot com boom and by a combination of distance education and being part of uh, atkt he earned his stripes by getting a cushy job designing websites and later became later building his own design company satisfying the need of the never ending line of customers during the dot com boom sachin got on to photography bug early it started in the year 2000 with a seven day trip conducted by wwf to the sundarbans tiger reserve with mr kedar gore as a mentor with just a pair of binoculars this trip opened his eyes and senses to the wonderful world of wildlife he says this helped him appreciate nature in its entirety instead of a single animal in 2001 he bought himself a canon eos 66 with a 72 300 kit lens and went on a trip to the kanha wildlife sanctuary and the obsession and the passion took over running his company and taking a break for 2 to 3 weeks a quarter he honed his skills both on being a naturalist and a photographer he attempts to portray the many moods of wildlife from the tenderness expressed by a mother towards her child to the violent confrontation between beasts and he strives to convey hope for both wildlife and humanity sachin's images inspire curiosity about the natural world and help people reconnect with nature his love for nature photography and his entrepreneurship skill were further honed as a part of a you know as a part of a, a very you know a good company in bangalore a, a company that all of us photographers in bangalore know about called tohold his photographs have been featured in national and international media and his images have received several photography awards from sanctuary asia djmpc better photography amongst others apart from birds and mammals his love for frogs have helped discover a new species of frog in india called ramanella anamalensis 
Try saying that 10 times. You'll know the difficulty. These past six months have seen Sachin build a new company from scratch, once again, and focused on mentoring and leading aspiring photographers on tours and nature trails within and outside India, including destinations such as Borneo, Tanzania, Brazil, Ethiopia, Madagascar, Russia, Costa Rica, and most frequently, Kenya. Being a Canon maestro, he is now experimenting with letting go of his long and big lenses for wide angle and environmental portraits. He also has a plan to tick off Ecuador for birds and frogs, the Galapagos Islands, and Papua New Guinea for its wildlife diversity. So, stay tuned. Sachin's plans for 2020 and beyond is a chock-a-block of photography tours and workshops in some of the most exotic places on the planet. In addition, he is pursuing his passion for teaching and imparting knowledge to a young generation of naturalists and photographers, predominantly who are growing up on social media and instant gratification. Now, let's get ready to be wowed by Sachin's images and understand the art of composition. Over to you, Sachin. Thank you so much, Mr. Srinath. That was very wonderful. And I like the fact that you asked people to repeat the frog name 10 times. Maybe they can just mute like what you did for the first five minutes and just repeat whatever they want. Uh, <laughs> I said Murphy's Law, you know. Yeah, Absolutely. Know. Yeah. We can't do anything about it. But it was quite, quite nice. I'm sure all of us were waiting. Okay, let us guess what Mr. Srinath is saying. <laughs> But thank you all. Thank you so much. Um, it's a pleasure always to talk to people. Um, that, that's a part of parcel of my job uh, and I kind of enjoy it. Uh, I've been teaching for the last 13, 14 years now and I like it when people can take back any information from any of the talks like I did yesterday. I, I, I heard Mr. Girish's talk yesterday, which was phenomenal. He had so many insights to share and me being uh, shooting macro for what 17 18 years now there is still yeah. so much to learn from small nitty gritties that he shared it, it's mm -hmm. fascinating that how the world of wildlife is so massive and enormous that you can't put a finger and say i know it all or i have traveled everywhere or i have done it all it, it doesn't work at all there is still scope to learn uh, in in this domain for sure uh, it might not be the same in other genres of photography, but uh, wildlife per se, it's so massive. That is why it's very pleasing also, because you just don't know what you're doing. Every day is a new day. Uh, every uh, sighting is a new sighting. Uh, every learning is a new learning. So, uh, so yeah, it, it's it's good fun. Uh, so, yeah, I, I look forward to talking to you. Everybody can find their own niche, right? I mean, you can find your own niche wherever you want. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely, yes. True, true, true. All right. So, over to you, Sachin. Let's cool. Thank you, so Thank you so much, Mr. Srinath. So, I, uh, guys, I'll just share the screen and I shall share my presentation. Um, now, you guys will have to bear with me for an hour. And I, I, it's slightly tricky, guys, because I come from a teaching background. So, I invariably might end up uh, trying to tell you what to do, what not to do. But again, uh, this is a creative medium. So I am no one to tell you how you should be composing your images. But I might probably be able to give you a little bit of direction just in case you want. Okay. If you know it, as I earlier said, if you know it and you think you're good and you're sorted there, whatever I say, it could be just a revision for you. But if there are certain points that you can pick up and say, hey, this is something that I could try, uh, uh, it might uh, change the way you do your photography. And it's not completely out of the box. It's the same old mundane stuff, just that us photographers, we've never been trained. All of us, who whoever's listening to me, I'm sure we've not been trained per se. I wasn't. Um, I, I learned it by just trying out things and watching people and seeing people's work. Uh, it's, it's very fascinating to see how people actually produce uh, uh, pictures. It's, it's so, so cool. Uh, I used to follow two photographers, Nick Brand and uh, Michael Nick Nichols. Uh, uh, Nick Nichols is, is something phenomenal for me because he they did that mega transit. Uh, they walked through the Amazon Gibbon, uh, Africa uh, area, uh, what, for 200 days or uh, two years or something. And it was fascinating how they could produce pictures in the wild every day, um, see new perspectives, show us viewers new perspectives. It's, it's very cool. Now, 
when we all talk about photography for all of us it is a pleasure giving tool if you understand right all of us are very happy making pictures when we make pictures there are a lot of times we smile we say oh man this is so cool uh, you know, because you could capture the moment that you could witness and you can go back and show it to the world now that world could be uh, your family members your friends your distant relatives or or just the world because today social media has opened so much avenues for us to display our pictures online uh, now but coming back to the point is does it make you happy because if it makes you happy you're on the right path simple uh, nothing i say will matter it, it doesn't matter at all but even if you're on the right path even if it gives you happiness it can be possible that um, our our friends are being nice to us our family members are being nice to us uh, the world per se at times are being nice to us saying hey nice lovely picture which is good again uh, i i don't intend to make you all so rigid saying hey no listen you i want you to do x y z no but I, all, all i'm asking you to do is are you willing to open up the perspective and say hey whatever i have learned till now is good let me hear this out and see what else can i produce right and how do i produce these pictures so while i was talking about this i i i harped upon the topic saying does it make you happy because if it makes you happy you are on the right path now what are we doing when we take pictures we we take a picture of a moment that we see and we come back and show it to the world brilliant now when we see a moment is that all we see what what is seeing uh, because if if imagine now this okay this is an emerald gecko in the islands of madagascar it's on a large plant okay large plant with lots of thorny leaves and this guy is peeping out from one leaf now for my naked eye guys i can see the parking lot lots of trees this plant multiple leaves having multiple emerald geckos and me choosing to show this frame to you that is my composition right now all of you all who are watching me either on a laptop or an ipad or a phone if you just take your eye off the device and just look around you are either sitting in a room or a, a, a veranda or or uh, outdoors anywhere you your eye is seeing lot many things now if i give you a camera and say you decide the lens you want to mount but you show one story of what you are seeing now it's very tricky it's very trippy also because i could actually show you my entire room but i could show just my cat house i have two cats in my house i could just show you my cat house or i could actually show you one small souvenir that someone had gifted me at the corner i could show anything or i can use a wide angle and show all now that is your composition and none of it is wrong you wanting to show the cat house is not wrong you wanted to show the souvenir is not wrong you wanted to show the house is not wrong but if you take all three pictures and then compare maybe you'll realize hey this has more weightage than the other two i like this more than the other two for that to happen are you be willing to look at different perspectives in the same a same place are we looking to take different pictures of the same scenario that we are looking at so that we learn how to compose right because what is composition composition is what you want to show amongst all the things that you are showing it could be anything i'm i'm particularly talking about wildlife guys right so a a a a tiger chasing a deer are you zooming in and showing only the tiger are you zooming in and showing only the deer are you zooming in and showing both of them are you zooming out and showing the forest where they are running together or you're not bothered about that and you show a beautiful orchid on the side i don't like tigers you could do that right it's your composition but you saw all of them in that frame so you decide what is good for you so the initial slides will be slightly um, uh, gyan giving where i will tell you hey this is how the world revolves around and this is how um, uh, historically people have composed uh, but you can break the box and say i want to think out of the box and i want to frame differently fair enough good but do try to implement these points before you evolve before you graduate because uh, i am not going to talk about creative photography today at all i'm going to talk about very traditional how to compose what to do and blah 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 uh, because to reach to the creative stage you have to pass through this guys now if you pass through this trust me when you make creative pictures people who are looking at the pictures will say boss i have seen this guy's work and he's evolved brilliantly if you start making creative pictures directly without knowing how to 
so called correctly composed people say this was accidental if i fluke he made a pan shot and is now claiming oh i intentionally created a slow shot a speed shot maybe he didn't know how to pump up the air so maybe he didn't know how to how to take a faster shot a speed shot so you leave the window open for people to uh, assume that i don't want you to and hence i would want you to implement certain things right so let us talk about how do you define composition what would be the points to define composition uh one would be the guidelines and rules i'll quickly run you through on what are the guidelines rules then how do you crop and frame couple of frames for that and then a, a wider perspectives why is everyone moving wider and how does it really work then is light uh how can you implement light to make your pictures compositionally different fourth fifth is story how can you i'll show you a couple of frames saying uh, can you build a story but each one of them is composition so it's not only about equipment guys it's not only about zooming in zooming out it's not only about the first point all five it's like depth of field uh, uh, just aperture will not help you change your depth of field right it's it's the focal length also it's the distance between you and the subject also it's it's zoom also it's all of that right so similarly composition will be a mix of all these five topics and we'll see how do we go ahead with each one of them let's talk about guidelines rules uh, what are guidelines and rules why should we say there should be any guideline in a picture a uh, guideline per se uh, we've known that scientifically apparently it's proven that if i follow certain things in my photography uh, it is going to appeal to a majority audience in the world okay they've actually done research to figure this out um, i don't say it people say it okay you can actually google this and find out now what does these guidelines say uh, so throughout the presentation guys on the top left i have the ppt uh, uh, the the slide name and at the bottom left i've written what equipment i have used so most of you all who are curious to know what lenses and what camera body i've used i've mentioned there so that you don't have to ask this question in the end and you can ask something else apart from this so what is the first and foremost most common basic um, compositional rule is rule of third we all know that what is the rule of third rule of third says that as much as possible uh, do not keep the subject in the center of the frame as much as possible it's not necessary that you do not have to or you shouldn't at all but please try and not keep it in the center if not in the center where do i keep it to keep it off center okay where within the off center so you take a frame like this like this was shot in kenya in masai mara uh, why have i kept my lions at that place because i would break the frame into three different parts vertically three parts 33 33 33 and horizontally three parts or uh, rather i made it opposite yeah of uh, horizontally three parts and vertically three parts 33% each okay and the interjection points where the cross points are you try to keep your subject there so any of these four points is good you can try to keep your subject in any of these four points okay now why have i chosen the bottom right and not the bottom left or the top right or the top left we'll come to that but this is the first and foremost guys rule of third okay it's very very commonly known most of us know it but for people who don't know it this is why you do it okay rule of third says that please do not keep your subject in the center of the frame keep it slightly off center now where off center to the center to the place where it's going to give you sense of direction that is the second compositional rule what is sense of direction the lions are looking to the left and hence you place them to the right because they're looking to the left so wherever they're looking towards so if you see me on the side of your screen now I, I, on you can see my camera right if i'm looking like this you add you need to add more space where i'm looking at but if i'm looking like this you need to add more space here how do you do it you just move your focus point you use a single point focus as opposed to a not to focus because the camera will automatically decide you take over that and you use a single point focus and you move it to the left or the right wherever you want to place your subject okay so now amongst these four points the left two points are ruled out because the lines are looking to the left so i have to utilize either the top right or the bottom right is that correct now which one of these two are we going to use bottom right why not necessarily again okay guys remember this when i say guideline ethic rule i i i don't want to push down saying hey this is the rule and you have to follow it no you don't have to but it's ideally best as i said earlier okay now why bottom because the most common uh, compositional flaw is that uh, or requirement is have less of a foreground and more of background 
Okay, what is a foreground and what is a background? Anything from you to the subject is a foreground, and anything from the subject behind is the background. Okay, because you are only aiming at your subject now, guys. Remember, subject for you is it the entire uh, uh, grassland that I'm showing or these two lines? For me, of course, these two lines, right? The hills in the back are uh, they are called the Olo Lolo escarpment? Yeah, very funny name. It's actually Olo Olo Lo, <laughs> nevertheless. Uh, but uh, the escarpment is not the hero. The hills behind is not the hero. These two lines are my hero. So if these two lines are my hero, I want less of grass and more of sky because the sky is also slightly dynamic. It's slightly richer. Uh, grass will be stagnant. It will it'll just be one flow of grass from me to the line. But if you want to, you can absolutely do that. What you do is put the lines on top. Your calling is that you have less of sky and more of grass. That's your calling. You could do that. But ideally speaking, try and do this. Are we good with this? So in rule of third, we say that we split into 33, 33, 33. We put it in any one of these four corners based on the sense of direction that wherever the subject is looking at, add a little more space there because you want to know where the subject is going towards. You don't want to know where it's come from. Yeah. A very simple portrait of a bird. Uh, this is the Thalamanka hummingbird. It's, it's in the highlands of Costa Rica. Why is it placed slightly to the right? Same funda because it's looking to the left. I do not have to worry about top point, bottom point, left and right because it's more of a portrait. Even if it is a portrait, because it's looking to the side, any one side, please add more space there. Okay. Mountain Nyala, it's, it's an endemic uh, uh, eland kind of an animal. It's actually the relative of an eland. Eland is the largest antelope in the world. Uh, Mountain Nyala is found only in the highlands of Ethiopia and uh, very, very gorgeous, sturdy, solid looking animals. Now, if you realize less of foreground, little more of background, right? Similarly, it's slightly to the left because it's walking to the right. It's very basic, common things that I'm recommending, guys. I'm not showing fancy aspects and saying, hey, boss, this is what you want to do. No, with your equipment, all I'm requesting you to do is see if you can make this difference in your photography. You will evolve faster because that is how good photography is perceived as good. Okay, cool. Then the trick would be go to eye level, eye level of the animal, not yours, right? If you're standing, everything is eye level. If you go to the level of the animal's eye or the subject's eye, bird, animal, of course, you can't climb trees then, uh, but as much as possible, if you could do, you could generate a slightly better picture. Now, in this case, it's a giant anteater. It's in, it's, it, it, they roam around in the ranches in Panthenol in Brazil. Uh, Panthenol is a very, very large area where you can get to see these guys. And uh, they are just roaming around and they have very small eyes. So they can't really see you well. They can hear you well. They can smell you well. Uh, uh, so you have to stalk a little, go silently and it will let you approach. Uh, and all of this is on foot. You're not on car. You're just walking and approaching the animal very silently. Once you approach, let him walk around. There, there are a lot of anthills. It, it, they feed on ants. They have really long tongue. So they shove it under the anthill and the ants get stuck in the tongue and they sip it up again. Now, when they are scanning these areas, you can just go and plonk yourself at one place, go lower, and you would be able to produce a slightly better picture. Now, why would I be able to produce a better picture as opposed to standing and taking? Because when you stand and take, your angle is steep, right? When your angle is steep, if this is your subject, guys, look at my camera, please. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, if, if this is your subject, if the angle is steep, your background is this, the ground, which is very close to the subject, right? Which means by any wider aperture also, you'll be find it difficult to blur the background because the background is very close. Remember, one of the criteria for blurred background is depth of field requires your subject to be very far from the background. That is why the background can get blurred. How do you do that? You go to the level of the animal and see if you can isolate the subject against the background. And that is what you try to do here. What you see in the background, the grass and all can be blurred out easily if you go lower. Right? So go to the level of the animal and see if you can produce. Now, this is a, a, a very uncommon bird. It's a large bird, um, half the size of an Indian peafowl, I would say. It's called the crested fireback. And they're, they're found in dense forest areas. They come out only to forage out in the open. We were prepared for that. We were flying. 
laying flat on the ground so that we can have the level of the bird it makes a massive difference guys if you now unfortunately i don't have pictures uh, to compare because uh, if i had stood the bird would have gone off so we wanted to lay on the ground and be there so that we can let the bird be slightly comfortable by our presence and allow us to do what we want so my request is if possible again now again in indian forest you cannot because you are most of the time in a gypsy uh, but you could use a monopod and put it down if it is allowed or you can go lower as much as possible there are some cameras now which have tilting screen so you can just put your hand down be safe again don't try out with tigers and lions and leopards and stuff like that but with other other animals uh, like elephants in the kala you can very easily do that you can just put your hand out of the gypsy tilt the camera screen and see the picture and take a picture right so going slightly lower will enhance your picture a little bit not dramatically major but it does matter a lot okay a very simple example of uh, uh, using it even in macro photography this is a bush frog calling on a a, a coffee plant um, in kurg and my angle is slightly diagonal it's it's not parallel it's i'm not right next to it right i'm right next to it but i'm not at the level of the eye for it so and i'm using a torch light i'm not using a, a body flash at all because i can control light how i wish uh, this would be impactful to me than the previous one because in this i can actually see the vocal sac completely i can illuminate it properly i can go to the level of the frog and have the perspective of how long the frog is and how long the vocal sac is all of that right so in my eye i am i'm you see guys unfortunately composition is such a topic where it is extremely subjective yeah what i might what appeal what might appeal to me might not appeal to some of you all say yeah, i like the previous one better so be it if you like it stick to it right do something that you that pleases you but see if it pleases the entire world or a majority world at least right so see if you can it's like walking into an art room and uh, art gallery and you don't understand any of the paintings everyone else is understanding but you're not understanding either you are lying <laughs> or they are lying so the point is is very tricky to understand what is a good picture uh, who uh, should you listen to me or should you listen to someone else tomorrow and say bus take an angular shot see what pleases you do it based on that but do compare all i'm requesting is you've done the conventional way of shooting try to do this a little and you compare yourself which one looks better for you pass it around look for whatever tips i'm giving whatever gyan i'm giving if you can now go back and see people's pictures there are lot of trust me i i shouldn't be saying this here but there are a lot of good photographers who don't know how to compose but they are good in a certain way they could be popular but they may not be good so it's very tricky how do you gauge how do you know i my composition might not be good for a lot of people i absolutely admit that but there could be there i i might try to show you some pictures that break the rule of third but i like it and i would want to present the world that way so be it if it's a flaw it's a flaw i'll live with it but you can't be cocky with every bad picture of say i wanted to create it that way you're lying to yourself you're you're curbing your progress right so don't do that uh, see if you can take feedback ask people see how more can you evolve and there's nothing wrong you at the end of the day it's up to you for you to decide whether you want to evolve or not right move around for a better background this is a exotic species called gilada baboon they again a highland ethiopian species found only there absolutely dropped it gorgeous animals uh, now both are the same individual at the same place more or less the same place all i've done is i have moved myself 3 feet to the right Uh, actually to the left because the picture on the left is where there was a mountain behind these are high uh, highland species as i said so you you find them on cliff edges so uh, and just behind there is a gorge so you could actually get the sky also as a background now between the two which one looks good that's up to you i i don't know i like both i'm not even pointing at one saying but i like the left one more than the right one no i'm not saying that i'm saying you can have two different backgrounds of the same subject are you willing to experiment that are you willing to work around that there was nothing wrong with that on the left but you'll have to pictures now to post or to share or to print or to um, exhibit or to give it to awards or to whatever you have two different pictures what's the point of spending 20 minutes taking a picture of the same baboon doing nothing at the same angle why not look at different perspectives all we did is moved 4 feet to the left 
and we had this guy in the background we were hoping now when you move four feet to the left remember guys baboon is not all turned towards you baboon is still looking in that direction all you have to hope is that he turns towards you which he did thankfully but unless you try for all you know if i had gone four feet and the baboon wouldn't have turned towards me i might have had a side profile of him but there is not nothing stopping me from trying right all i'm requesting you to do is just move around and see if you can actually work on these perspectives okay so that is the most basic of uh, the how to compose now let me give you a, a little idea on how to crop pictures and why not to crop certain things um a uh, 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 rhino uh, in kaziranga one of the most common things that people make a mistake on is chop of limbs uh, in uh, when you crop it not literally uh, a chop of limbs in a picture when you don't see the limbs in this case you cannot see the legs doesn't mean you can put the rhino lower in the frame it, you have to give that sense of leg in the picture even if you don't see it that that's basic sense okay so you uh, i don't know how many of you have seen a rhino they have very stocky short legs because the armor plate is beyond almost till the knee and lower so that you can see in this corner right so the leg will come only till here that is all so you give little more breathing space after that that is all you can do at the bottom okay are you clear with this that i am requesting you to add some space to the animal even if you can't see the body part do not chop off the body part okay that is that's called the inclusions and exclusions similarly in this case let's say if i zoom out and take a picture i might end up taking only half the gore which is bad so retain 33 to 35 to 40% at best and omit 60% of the body so if you have to crop an animal using a zoom okay when i say crop an animal i'm not saying take a picture uh, in the field then bring it to a computer and then crop it in my entire presentation guys there is only one picture which i have cropped and i'll tell you which one rest all pictures are framed as is corner to corner in the field by moving the focus point right which is what i want you to try i want you to learn how to move focus points and um, sorry again if i sound very gyani guys but um, as i said that's the perk of my uh, that's the problem with my job um, because that's how i'm used to talking i'm extremely sorry i don't intend to uh, tell you guys that you guys don't know it as i said um, uh, but if you want to pick certain topics from me please okay so i would recommend uh, i have to be very careful of what i say in the in the online world these days Uh, so i would recommend that when you are cropping off any subject including a human being let's say there is a human being okay standing um and you want to take a picture of him now either include the entire human being or take torso and above just below the chest and up don't take from waist and above it's a bad picture okay don't take it from knee and above it's a, it's a bad picture now again for fashion photographers they might take it because they want the entire hand limb to be there but not the leg limb they don't want okay then they are free to but let's say a giraffe forget about a human a giraffe is standing straight okay uh, or an elephant for all of us would have shot an elephant who are into wildlife photography an elephant is standing straight do not chop off from half the animal up make a vertical instead and take the picture or zoom in and take only 35 to 40% of the subject so that it's intentionally cropped and not accidentally cropped because most of the time we would take a picture and the legs are chopped ah uh, or the tail is chopped um, uh, or or the uh, the trunk has gone up but the trunk tip is chopped these are bad these are absolutely bad idea to deal with so uh, please ensure that you forcefully zoom in and take only a certain part of the animal if you cannot accommodate the entire animal because having more than 50% would want the viewer to see more simple they're like oh i wish I, i wish i had seen the entire leg or i wish he had included the tail uh, or the tra- trunk was not chopped any of this because you are you are letting the person to desire more right a classical example of uh, a classical example of uh, a tiger where i cannot accommodate the animal in the entire frame okay now what do i do with it i am using a 500 mm lens if you see a 500 mm means i cannot zoom out and that's the only lens i have let's say okay hypothetically i had another lens but i had to show this to the world so when you crop it i wouldn't there is lot of empty space in front of the tiger of course sense of direction wise he should be on the right and there should be more space but it's little too much space <laughs> 
right? But why is there too much space? Because if I bring the animal a little more inside, I would have to add the belly inside. If I add the belly inside, you would want to see the hip and the hind leg and then the tail. So I would not, in this case, I would not want you to look at anything more than what I'm showing you. Simple. So that is how you crop. You force yourself to crop in certain way where you say, but I do not want to add anything more than 35 to 40%. Okay. Please make vertical frame, guys. This is, uh, I, I started making vertical frames long back, uh, almost in 2005, 2006. Uh, because I was desperate to get my picture published in a magazine cover. Uh, uh, so, and I realized that if it had, has to be published on a magazine cover, it has to be a vertical picture. And I was obsessed. I would want every picture to be vertical. And I would actually compose in the field, have empty space on the top because I would want the magazine name to be written there. I don't want any distraction there. So I was obsessed to that level. But I realized it's a very, very creative uh, a medium to play with uh, or a creative aspect to look at uh, or a creative way of composition because you do not have to worry about four points per se you can worry with just two points the rule of third on the top and rule of third at the bottom uh, the the, uh, the third line so 33 percent from top 33 percent from bottom wherever the line is you can try to plonk your subject there also now a classical example where uh, a vertical makes more sense than horizontal right why would i want to make a horizontal if i make a horizontal there is no anchor. You will not even know how high the cheetah cub has climbed, right? So when you make a picture like this, please ensure that you anchor the image so that you show how much the cheetah has climbed. It's not climbed seven feet. It's climbed probably three feet. That's all, right? Or two feet. But it's easy for people to imagine. Otherwise, it, it's slightly tricky. Why would I want to make a horizontal here? It, it calls out to be made vertical. But this has to be decided there, guys, instantly. And if you know that there is a possibility of a vertical, you will force yourself. What, where we fail is we don't even think about it. We are happy looking at the tiger. Oh, the tiger is coming down. Talk, 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 talk. Oh, the tiger is down. Look at the picture. Wow, beautiful, gorgeous. I nailed it. N even now, I'm not realizing I should have made a vertical. So I'm saying, if you force yourself, saying, "Hey, no, I want to think slightly different. I want to, I, I want to try something different." Uh, you know, camera, man, camera was manufactured, what, 180 years ago, uh, the first camera. Uh, the guys who made the camera never in the wildest imagination assumed that there will be a day where the final output of a picture is going to be Instagram. They always wanted prints out of it. The final output was supposed to be a print, right? But we are in a world where our final output is going to be Instagram or Facebook. Let's accept it, right? How many pictures do we print? Very rarely, right? Now, if you are talking about Instagram, all the more reason you make a vertical because you have to utilize the real estate on a phone. 99.9% .9 of the population is going to view the picture on an Instagram, uh, Instagram on a phone, which means it's a vertical phone. And if you put a square or a, two by three ratio image like this, you are utilizing a shorter or a smaller real estate on your phone. But if you take a vertical, you are utilizing a long. I will do anything to sell you vertical frames. That is all I'm doing. Okay, I would go to any extent to convince you saying, guys, please try vertical frames. It, it actually works. But uh, but please try. It, it, it's a super cool uh, uh, area to play with. Like, look at this. I wouldn't have been able to fit this with my 400 prime, this is with a 400 2.8, I couldn't accommodate. So I am left with no choice but to make a vertical. Because if I make a horizontal, I'll have to chop off the limb or hand or the leg, right? I will have to because I cannot manage. So be it. If that pushes you to do it, so be it, right? But try to make vertical. Even when I make black and I'm not going into how to make black and white and when to make black and white. I'm, I'm sure uh, we can do that later sometime. But today's session is only how do I keep the subject? Where do I keep it? Right. So in this case, you have to make vertical because it calls out to be made vertical. Uh, same Gilada Baboon again. Uh, if it's a portrait, uh, please keep the eye at the one third level. OK, don't keep the eye in the center of the frame as much as possible. Oh, one of the most common mistakes people do is if you can look at my screen again, guys, uh, on, on the left, uh, this is not a good portrait because my eye is in the center of the frame. This is a good portrait. Okay, where, yeah, this is a good portrait where I am saying that less space on the top and more space below my chin so that my eye comes to the one third level. So it's, it's, it's very easy if you keep that in mind and work towards it. It's very easy. So uh, again, not necessarily, but almost always it will work for you.
uh, a tight portrait of uh, a Gilad of Babun. Now the eye is slightly above the one third line. It's slightly above, but I'm okay with it because I need more space below the chin. Otherwise, it's too close. If I move it up, the chin will not have more breathing space. So it's always okay in my head to chop off the temple, but don't chop off the chin. Imagine you have a picture where your chin is chopped, but you have more hair on the top. It doesn't work. Uh, it's, it's not a good portrait. Uh, try and see any good portrait uh, online or any of the photographers that you follow who you perceive as good. See how they make portraits. No one will try to keep uh, chop off half the chin and have the entire temple. It doesn't work. Yeah. So uh, because the eye is the speaking component there, and that is where you use the rule of third to your advantage. Uh, a quick decision has to be made here. The lioness is going for the cup. It's going to lift it. Now I would use the bottom rule of third line, right? But you have to plan quickly. Uh, now this is a place, guys, where I can plonk the long lens and I use the wide angle and say, hey, I would want to show the entire place where they are, and this is the den, and this is the bush under which they're going to sleep, and blah blah. But you think quickly and see this could be a possibility, and that is what you can aim. Um, a majority of time you might miss shots. A majority of time because you are planning something but execution wise it failed because unfortunately we are in a genre where the subject is not going to listen to us the subject is going to do what it wants to so you could plan whatever you wish but the line has to do what you think it is going to do right so uh, if you are willing to take that gamble and work on it then you can get some very very cool pictures uh, to work with yeah uh, a classical portrait, a point and shoot portrait, very honestly. Now, the eye is slightly lower than the one third, than the one third that I promoted, right? So that's up to you because my, it, again, at 400 mm, I am okay having less foreground and more background. I'm okay where the eye is because if I want to move the eye to the one third, I will have to unnecessarily add more foreground, which is not helping me in the frame at all. So I'm good with this. So that kind of tweaking, this ko Hindi mein unnis bees bol da, a little bit here and there. That is up to you. Uh, you can decide how much of a, a, a play area you want to extend from 33% to 35, 30, 40, 45. It's up to you. You don't have to be that stringent. But you, you get a crux of what I'm saying. There are two portraits. One is a full body portrait. One is a tight portrait. Now, the one on the left, full body portrait, the eye is almost at the one third, right? A little bit of grass, nice uh, blurred background, but the eye is at the one third but the image where the tigress young tigress is doing a flemen with the tongue sticking out uh, she's trying to inhale uh, and try to take the smell in so that she can use another uh, organ in her uh, mouth upper palate to absorb the scent sorry i go get into random topics but uh, what she's doing is something called flemen but a very funny face for people who uh, look at it now the eye is below the one third it's not exactly at the one third level but it's okay because if you move your eye slightly up, your ears will go to the close, closer to the frame and they are called kissing edges. Kissing edges means the subject is too close to the frame uh, and it's called kissing, it needs room to breathe. So if you can just have a little bit space around the animal, it's cool. Imagine the animal on the left now who has the paw raised and I plonk him further lower in the frame and I have a very thin slit of line between the frame and the leg it won't be impactful you need to have some breathing space around the subject okay that is why you call it tight composition versus loose composition so this is what it is a tight composition is the one where the tongue is sticking out but even there i would want a little bit of space around okay this is the cropped image this is the only cropped image i'm showing uh, now this is a processed image. I have darkened the area around the chin and all just to make it slightly dramatic. Um, uh, he's a very gorgeous tiger from Bandhagat called Bhim. Um, uh, slightly aggressive. He doesn't really like uh, tourists per se. And he was about to give us that snarl before we backed off. Uh, uh, so a, a good intense uh, picture. So uh, for, for me again, I mean too subjective uh, because just eye contact doesn't do work, guys. If we if, if all my pictures is only about eye contact and it, it doesn't work because it has to be compositionally different also, right? So uh, this is a classic portrait where I will say, okay, uh, I have a tight framing of a subject and I'll keep the eye slightly above one third, which is okay because as I explained about the chin, I want a little more breathing space around the chin, right? Cool. Uh, let, I'll show you just four slides talking about equipments. Why? 
we perceive equipments differently why we think a zoom lens or a prime lens or a 500 mm lens will give me only uh, um, a different perspective it doesn't it need not uh, you can make unique images with any equipment that you've been given uh, this if i had i have not told you what equipment it is it looks like a wide angle shot but shot with a 500 mm it, it's far it's it's i have shot this with a 500 mm lens so just because i am showing you the entire ravine this is actually ravines this is very, uh, very close to a place called ranthambore in rajasthan some 150 200 kilometers uh, uh, one of the last ravines left in our country and um, unfortunately government thinks these are uh, uh, unusable areas and wastelands and we should flatten them and stuff like that but these are houses to uh, desert foxes uh, hyenas caracals jungle cats a lot of animals so this desert fox a fox has made a den and it's peeping out of the den. I would want to keep it at one corner or not in the center. But I've used a 500 mm to get that perspective. A wider perspective, I've used a 100 mm, a macro. So it's not that with a 100 mm you have to go closer to the subject and take a beautiful macro picture. No, you don't. You can take portraits with a 100 mm macro because it's a 2.8 lens, right? Uh, the Canon and Nikon, 100 and 105 mm, uh, both are are absolutely brilliant uh, portrait lenses because it's it's a wider aperture. So you can use a wider perspective with the same lens. What lens do you think I would have used for this? Again, 100 mm. It's a macro lens. The bird is probably two and a half feet from me. It's it's sleeping. It's roosting. Uh, this was in a place called Amboli in 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 Maharashtra, and uh, we are we are looking for frogs and snakes, and we see this gorgeous small kutti bird sitting and sleeping. And uh, we we had a torchlight. We did not want to disturb it. And most of the time, I use torchlights as opposed to flash. So we lit it up with the torchlight and we increased the ISO and bumped a couple of pictures. Saying, "Hey, let us quickly take a picture." Now with a hundred mm. So it's not necessary that you have to have that stigma saying, "Oh, I'm using hundred mm." If I want to shoot a bird, I need to change. Of course, if you want to shoot a bird, you need longer lenses. But it's not necessary that you would need a long lens always. There are opportunities available that you could utilize with this also. This frog, this is shot with a 500 mm. <laughs> so uh, this is Borneo. We we uh, we were driving in the night looking for uh, 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 we were looking for what we were looking for leopard cat and we were looking for clouded leopards. We were looking for gliding uh, squirrels and stuff like that. And we saw this massive Wallace's uh, tree frog. It's a gorgeous, beautiful frog. And it's a canopy frog. It doesn't come down to the floor. And uh, we are already on a truck. Uh, which is elevated way too much. Thankfully, the canopy frog is to the eye level, and these guys have those floodlights to look for um, uh, uh, animals and mammals up in the tree. Uh, thankfully, it worked with, for me, and I used my 500 mm for that. So my point is, uh, you could use any of the equipment for whatever. Of course, if I want to magnify this, if I want to go closer to this animal, I wouldn't use a 500. I would rather use a 100 mm because I will be able to get that magnification. But it's not necessary that you cannot produce uh, pictures with a given equipment you can still do it okay let's come to wider perspectives why is the world going after wider perspective why is it that we say oh wider the better and we'll be able to do a little more uh, than what we can uh, i'll give you uh, i'll run you through some quick examples uh, uh, this is a classical tiger portrait in ranthapur Okay, um, uh, the 400 f4 do lens is just slightly lighter. It's an old, uh, this is what seven years old picture. Uh, now, I can show it, it. Do you know where I've shot this? Uh, it could be a zoo, it could be Mysore Zoo, it could be Kabini, it could be anywhere. Uh, how do I show you slightly more than what the tribe is sitting there? What is the point of making 200 pictures of the same picture? Uh, right, same frame, 200 frames. What is the point? I rather change my lens. If you can have two bodies and two lenses, brilliant. If not, quickly try and change the lens and see. So this I've shot with a 70, 200, or 200 mm. Uh, uh, Ranthambur is known for old ruins, uh, tilapitted buildings in the background, which you don't, uh, which people have not been using, abandoned places and stuff like that. So if even this may not give me a clear perspective of what I am looking at, this might tell me where I was seeing the tiger. Now, if I go back to the first image, did you even? by any chance visualize that this is where the tiger was sitting no you wouldn't have because i didn't even show it to you can i work on showing that also to you because 
not every picture is about instagram this may not work on instagram this is a bomb on instagram but people will not even notice it because it's too small a screen but this will work if i'm writing a blog on run board this will work if i am writing an article on a, a magazine and say this could be the cover picture of this is what randhambur is i'm just giving an example this is not how randhambur looks randhambur looks many more shades than this but i'm saying i could use a wider perspective to talk about certain animal a jaguar uh, in pantanal brazil you go on speed boats and you look for jaguars who actually come and look for caimans which are smaller crocodiles a uh, different species uh, uh, and these guys uh, jaguars hunt caimans now when you are on a speed boat you are actually scanning the corners of the river and seeing and spotting the animal and taking picture this is with a 400 mm do you even realize how it would look like if i show you a perspective no i would want to show you this is how it looks the the animal is on the bottom right at the water edge it's the same animal same picture Uh, not the same picture of course same place same animal i have just used two different equipment to show so as i said this people will miss it if i post it on instagram or facebook but it is a good picture for me to put it up on wall if i am into prints it's a good picture for me to talk about panthenal when i write a blog or when i tell people hey listen if you are signing up on a tour for panthenal this is how it is and this is how amazing it is and you have to drive through it's a carpet of leaves you may not see the animal it's dense it's part of amazon after all right uh, uh, so it's dense in certain parts but you could spot the animal this way so that could be your storytelling image that could be your uh, compelling you to see more than what you could an uh, absolutely gorgeous beast of a lion with beautiful black mane walking in early morning light uh, where is it which part of africa uh, is it mara is it tanzania does it matter it doesn't matter absolutely not it's a beautiful picture fine great cool can i show you a little wider frame oh there's a mountain behind there are clouds behind where exactly is this this could be some place else this is the gorongoro crater uh, in tanzania it's a massive caldera caldera means a, a, a volcanic mountain which collapsed within because it was hollow and only the rim of the mountain is left and there are these gorgeous animals inside the massive um, uh, crater okay and there are loads of animals it's a massive crater but at any point of time you can see the rim of the crater completely around you now how do i depict that image by showing you for the wider image of now this is classical gorongoro where else can you see mountains and stuff like that uh, you could see as i said the olololo escarpment but there's a all ridden by trees from the bottom it doesn't end with a grassland and water so i'm saying you can make slightly different pictures using couple of equipments if you are patient enough or if you desire different pictures because guys this this animal was walking for good 10 minutes now i could have popped this image for those 10 minutes i had this picture i can take more pictures more pictures more pictures more pictures 200 250 300 great after i come back i still am going to process only one or two it's it's not going to be that useful for us so uh, maybe having three different frames might work so this is with the 7200 this is also with the 7200 all i had to do is zoom in and take two different perspectives right so you can look at different perspectives when you work on a picture now rule of third says that this uh, is a gorgeous uh, animal in uh, the park ambuseli in uh, kenya there is called craig um, tim and craig were two uh, uncle and nephew uh, tim died and now craig is alive one of the um oh, old bull tuskers um there uh, in africa even females have tusks but uh, these are called super tuskers because they are really long 6 and a half 7 feet long tusks uh when a uh, iconic guy of ambuseli now why would i plonk him to the right because he's actually looking to the right so he should be to the left but what about the orange streak of light in the sky i would want that also that's my personal calling that's my personal taste um uh, as they say salt as per taste namak swad anusar you do what you uh, what appeals to you but do the basic rules even if i had to put it to uh, 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 put it to one corner i decided a corner and it did not plonk him in the center i kept little space at the bottom and more space on the top all that basic circles i still did but i decided to move between two different points and i said no i want him on the other side because i also want the sun and the streak of orange in the Uh, background right so that is a call that you could take uh, nilgiri thar in in uh, anamalai hills uh, in tamil nadu um, there are less than 2500 left in the world endemic only to two states in the entire world there is uh, tamil nadu and uh, kerala um, 
I know habitat destruction is one of the reasons why they are in trouble. Uh, roads being cut down in their areas, and I would want to show the entire perspective of how the traffic flows and how the male Nilgiritar still makes it his home and stuff like that. I want to give a wider perspective. I could have zoomed in and taken a beautiful portrait against a green background moving left. I have. I have. My point is you could try both. That is all, right? Uh, a, a lion is coming down a tree, a uh, silhouette, a uh, lovely light in the background. Now, why would I want to make a wide angle here? Because if I zoom in, I will, you'll not even know what kind of a tree it was. You'll not, I will get a picture of a lion is coming down, but zooming in would mean less light, would mean slower shutter, which means I'll have to bump up the ISO. If I use a wider angle, I will absorb a little more light. I'm okay with an fade shot and see how much it works, right? So all of that perspective will work. Again, less your foreground, ensure you don't chop off the top of the tree, you include the entire tree, zoom into, I'm using it 1740, right? I could have zoomed in a little more and shot at 30 mm, right? I've shot it at 17 mm, ensured that I have enough space. Uh, thankfully, I was using a 70D, which has a tilt screen. So I had put my hand outside the window and weaving it all throughout and waiting for the lioness to come down. Um, at times luck works for you, at times it doesn't. Like we were waiting here for three and a half hours. Thank God she came down just before we had to return back. If she hadn't, we would have lost the opportunity, but it's still better than zooming and taking a picture of a lioness coming down because that is done to death with and too many people have done it. There, and there are very enough pictures. So this will make it slightly unique than what people have done, right? Uh, a Malabar pit viper, you know how it is. It's, 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 it's a stream animal. It prefers staying very close to uh, a fast flowing water, slow flowing water, whatever stream animal at the end of the day. So using a slow shutter speed shot, use a tripod, mount it, make a vertical, ensure there is more space around so that the small waterfall is also available in the background. All that nitty gritties you can work on against. If you, if without me pointing out, I want you to subconsciously think whether has he done this basic rule of third that he's talked about all this while. Has he kept it in the center? If he has, why has he? If he has kept it off center, why has he kept it off center, right? A, a, a beautiful place called Nakuru Lake in Kenya. Uh, dark clouds descending. It was going to pour any minute, but there was gorgeous light on the zebra. Uh, it makes sense to make a wider perspective, okay? Uh, so wide angle, you know, in this case, th this is that these three gorgeous rocks coming out in a bay uh, in the middle of the sea in, uh, in when I say bay and middle of the sea, it's, it's almost the uh, side of the sea per se, where it meets land, a bay area. Uh, but these three massive structures come where uh, puffins and gulls and terns all breed. That rock is full of nests, okay? Uh, because no other predator will come, land predator at least will come and take away the nest, uh, raid the nest. So uh, you want to do justice and you, you go very close to the rock. So you, to do justice, you can use wide angle and give a entire perspective of the bird coming in and the bird going out of the nest and whatnot. And if I zoom in and show you only the tiger, it may not make, you'll not even realize how, how high it has climbed. Where is it? What kind of habitat is it? What Now, uh, now when I use the word habitat, it's quite tricky. A lot of people say wide angle means habitat shot. Need not. Uh, what is habitat? Habitat is way, way, way too big a word uh, for your picture uh, because this is not the only habitat. Uh, this guy, uh, this girl after this just walked down to a stream and that was also the habitat. Then it climbed a cliff. That was also the habitat, right? So uh, a loose composition, a wider perspective. You can call it habitat shot, but don't hammer down the word habitat too much because that may not necessarily be the only habitat because uh, there are various other things that you can see the animal in, which could be the habitat too, right? Uh, Asiatic elephant, this is, uh, uh, this is not a wild animal. This is the forest camp uh, elephant's calf who uh, was walking around the grass and we saw an opportunity. The, the, uh, these are called uh, spider lily flowers or something. They grow only on rhino poop. Uh, so uh, rhinos like most antelopes, rhinos are by the way closely related to antelopes. Like most antelopes have a dumping ground. So they all poop in one area. Uh, uh, and they have multiple dumping sites. So if I'm walking past, if I'm a rhino, I'm walking past, I'm looking at different toilets. So oh, there is a toilet there, there's a toilet there. Okay, I need to go there, take a dump and then walk around. So they all go to a communal pooping area and there's a stack of poop. And that is where these flowers grow because that is where they eat and birds eat and insects eat and they carry forward the uh, pollination, right? So uh, to complement the flowers with the elephant, I used a wider perspective. 
um, Ambassador again, Kilimanjaro in the way to background, um, a, a bull elephant slightly, um, uh, you know, uh, showing uh, the size, uh, sizing himself up and stuff like that with flattened ears. Um, you put him at a corner, use the wider perspective, take a picture, right? Because zooming in, taking a tight portrait is nothing wrong. All I'm requesting is after you've done all of that, can you put it? Put your other lens down and take pictures with your wider perspective too because you might be able to see a much bigger arena than the small area right this is due to tanzania um the sky was beautiful this is just at the sunset you see that the sun has just go gone below the horizon so the far end of the sky turns starts turning blue and then black and then then then, then. so it, it starts turning purple and comes down all the way to the horizon so it's a pretty cool time to take wider perspectives uh, uh, similarly in this case i've used a wider perspective but not as wide i've used atmm so that i've zoomed in little uh, uh, frame within a frame kind of picture so all of that is very subjective how you want to frame it now i could have zoomed in and taken only the zebra and the, uh, the giraffe in the background for all you know right so you could see things differently and compose how you wish to all i'm requesting is don't get bogged down by looking through the viewfinder and popping pictures throughout just put it down for multiple reasons one uh, you need to pause and breathe and see you need to admire to uh, you are a wildlife photographer because it makes you happy to witness wildlife so i am of the opinion very strong opinion that as a wildlife photographer at times you need to put your camera down and breathe and and soak it in too if you see a brilliant opportunity take a picture but there are times it's it's grazing it's just feeding or it's just doing nothing you don't have to look through the viewfinder throughout because you're you're, you're now narrowing your view right so if you put it down, then you can realize, hey, if I use a wide angle, I could possibly do this. I can place in here. I can do this and add this element. Oh, there's a tree here. Oh, there's an elephant walking in the background. Let me add that. You could have a perspective. That's why if you can keep putting your camera down and lift your head off and see and start taking pictures again, you'll be able to focus back to the place. Yeah. Uh, Ilinsky volcano. Uh, it's a dormant volcano in, in uh, the Russian peninsula. Uh, of Kamchatka. Uh, there are lots of these dormant uh, uh, volcanoes there uh, and Kamchatka brown bears feed on the Kuril Lake. This is a lovely lake again formed because of caldera uh, and salmons come there uh, every August, September, October. Uh, now is the time we should have been there but unfortunately we are sitting here and talking about it last year same time I was there uh, shooting this. Uh, so a, a wider perspective will show you where the bears are right as opposed to I, of course I have portraits of these animals of course I have tied pictures of them uh, uh, trying to chase the ch salmon, jumping and catching fish, all that. Yeah. But if you see an opportunity, do try and make that picture also because it will give you a different view of the same area. It's the same area. Uh, the earlier one was the evening and this is morning, different light. But I've used the same volcano and the bear to complement each other. Right. So you know that the hero is the bear and the um, sidekick is the volcano. So you can work around how you want to with your own pictures. Same with tigers. It, it's not necessary that we zoom in, pick up the longest lens, take pictures. Of course, uh, when I say not necessary, please feel free to take your pictures. Do whatever you've been doing till now. All I'm requesting is after you're done, put it down, see if you can have another equipment. Even if it's an 1855, if it's your kit lens that you have, shoot at 55 mm. There is no harm. You live in a digital era, guys. Pictures don't hurt you. Uh, pictures used to hurt people like us when we were shooting in film days where each picture costed us money uh, and we, it, 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 we used to cry because we wasted so many films because it would cost us a lot of money. Uh, the two best thing that has happened in a digital camera is one, you can see the picture instantly, which we couldn't back then. <laughs> uh, you wait for eight, 10 days to see your result. The second brilliant thing, which I call keep calling the magic button, is the delete button <laughs> if you made pathetic images just delete it you don't feel bad about missing out on something so not no harm in putting another lens and popping a picture uh, and taking a picture and worrying oh i'll have to delete it the only worry is oh what if this animal shakes his head at that moment and there is water splash oh man i would have missed uh, you know, I, I missed it because this idiot Sachin told us you shoot with a wide angle. If I had my long lens on, I would have snailed that picture. Absolutely possible, guys. There's a good possibility that you'll curse me later. But trust me, when you make pictures that are slightly different than your friends and everyone else in that melee has done, you will feel good saying, hey, I've also... It's a good remembrance factor for you. Think about it. When you come back with this picture, you would... this is a place in Bandhavad in peak summer. 
no no one would believe that this is how the park looks in summer of course not the park is dry but wherever there is water it, the fresh salt leaves come out and it's it's far more greener around that area so i wouldn't have remembered if i had taken only the tiger bitch i wouldn't have so it's a good portrayal of the entire scene right this is with a 500 mm it's freaking far but you can still produce a picture and do the basic things as i said don't chop off the top of the uh, tree you see the extreme right tree there are only three branches coming in add less of the tree and not add less of the subject and not the entire subject remember 30% 40% if i had added 60% of the tree and omitted 30 it is bad then i would have had to zoom out more and added that also so you work around that way place the subject again off center and see where you want to place the subject and pop a picture this is what this is where rhinos live this is kaziranga right so what is the point of me zooming in and showing you only the rhino no harm but would i also want this frame i would say yes right um i hope i'm not running out of time sorry make use of light uh, see if you can Uh, use light to compose because then you do not have to worry about rule of third. You do not have to worry about anything else. It's the light that is making the picture great for you. Uh, a backlit opportunity where you can get the rim light. This is around the board. Now this is the only component, guys, which is beyond you. You don't have control over this now. You have control over exposure. You have control over deciding which place to keep the subject. You have control over to decide whether I want to zoom in or zoom out. But light is not in your control. but when you see an opportunity like this you need to work on it and figure out first i am not going with the conventional straight head on light i'm looking at different light also how do i produce that early morning light why do people say go early morning late evening just before the sun comes in or at when sun comes out or just after the sun comes out similarly in the evening this is the sun is just at the horizon it's just about to come in this is rangandi to bird sanctuary early morning foggy morning the birds uh, the pelicans here don't really like to sit on the water and scoop uh, they, they what they do is they use the bottom pouch the the throat pouch uh, uh, the beak pouch to scoop in water and take it for the chicks for their babies uh, now uh, rangand it is a place where they do not like to sit in the water and then scoop uh, in the beak because there are crocodiles and they catch them so they just fly and glide and mid air they scoop water and take it so you get some very cool opportunities to make pictures of pelicans if you go in say november december january these three months you can get some nice pictures of them skimming over water uh, again i have not used a flashlight um, no diffuser no nothing it's just two torch lights i've asked two people to illuminate from two different angles so that i do not have to worry about the background i can have light where i want and i can play with the light so i decide how i want to take the picture right early morning light side lit Uh, the sun uh, this line is actually looking at it's not looking at the sun but it's looking at the direction of the sun that is where the sun is rising uh, and now conventional you keep it to the right because there is more space to the left less foreground more background all of that intact all i did was underex i shoot in aperture priority guys i have underexposed this picture by two and a half stops two by two third stop which is almost three stops to cut down light uh, uh, for a regular light uh, i it looks fairly decent enough but if i take a picture at zero exposure the rim and wherever the beard all of that will be slightly overexposed so i cut down dramatically to see if i can make a picture so whichever area that is not lit by the sun will automatically become black so uh, that is a uh, uh, that is something that you learn only if you try out multiple times under exposure and you'll realize oh this area is going to become dark so if your eye is tuned to it it's very easy uh, so uh, it helps us in my profession also because i often when i'm in the safari i'm guiding i can i can just quickly tell guys guys just under expose by two stops and get a result so they do not have to visualize it i have visualized it already in my lifetime way too many times so i know it will work uh, and you might get a slightly unique picture so all i'm requesting is if the light gives you opportunity try out different box exposure no as i said one of the problems with us is we go on popping the same picture with the same zoom same settings nothing nothing has changed but i have 300 pictures of the lion standing there so i would want you to try out something more okay uh, these are large red and green macaws these are massive birds um, and they fly at super speed like right? really really fast uh, but they flying over a sinkhole a sinkhole is uh, a tunnel that has collapsed okay so basically there was a cave 
and that cave collapsed and it's become a massive well. When I say massive well, it's probably 500 meters, uh, uh, one side and five meters, is basically uh, what more than a kilometer um, a diameter. Now these birds nest in that area. Now when they nest, they just fly at top speed in front of the, um, in, inside the uh, hole, the sinkhole, and you're standing on top. So when they fly, early morning, when the light is diagonal, the one side of the cave is not lit. It's, it's darker, not completely black, it's darker than the area where the sun's light is hitting. So when the bird flies into the sun, you can underexpose and make this picture. So I've not done anything. I've just underexposed this by almost three stops and popped a picture and you get an absolutely black background. So it's super cool if you can understand how to play with light, given the light opportunities and make pictures. Uh, this is I, I, it's a nocturnal lemur in the island of Madagascar. It's considered as a very evil animal. Uh, people are known to burn down their villages when they see this animal because they think it's the harbinger of death. And that is why this animal is extremely um, uh, critically endangered now. So uh, there is an island uh, that the government has formed and they let loose these animals so that people don't get in and kill uh, and they allow tourists to go there and see these animals so you carry uh, the guide will carry multiple uh, floodlights uh, a stick and a light on it and he'll illuminate it when he sees the animal okay so uh, in this case we asked him to hold the stick slightly up so that the light is up down because front light would mean the background wherever the trees the bush everything will be lit up right so top down it, it still has that evil look it has that villainous look but poor it's a very gorgeous animal if you look at it but unfortunately uh, that's the story around it uh, and i hope uh, uh, the animal survives for future generations to see but you can make dramatic pictures with interesting lights uh, a very, very common uh, picture these days where uh, these are frog eggs on a leaf. You illuminate it from the background using a torchlight so that, uh, uh, you know, you can see the tadpoles inside the opaque eggs. Backlit pictures. Uh, um, these are not silhouettes. These are backlit. The sun is not exactly behind it, slightly diagonal away. And you see the light spreading around the frame and you can make backlit pictures. Similarly, a backlit image, you, all you need to do is underexpose in these cases. Uh, because the light is so bright around, your camera will try to expose the light in the background and darken the subject. All you have to do is enhance it a little more and darken it furthermore. Okay, even uh, this is daytime. This is what probably 11.30 in the afternoon, bright sky. All you do is try to underexpose if need be or overexpose depending on how much of an exposure is needed in this case. And then you convert into a black and white in a post-processing unit. I've used Photoshop to turn this into a black and white. Now, guys, the rule of third wise, everything has fallen in place for me, honestly. But if this lion now in this scenario was, let's say, switched and it is actually the bum is towards the rock and it's looking to the left, then what would I have done? I would have still kept it there because the tree is adding so much value to it. So I would have still kept it because I would want the tree to be anchored at some place. I might have had less of that big rock, but I would have still kept the lion to the left. So that is a call that you can make. Yeah, Play with light silhouettes. Silhouettes are again many classical examples of what you can produce, largely in savanna areas because in India, the sun will go behind a mountain or a tree line of forest. Uh, very few places will get a silhouette opportunity, but um, East Kenya is, is one of the best places. Savannah's, uh, Kenya, Tanzania, both of these places offer a lot more opportunities. Early morning uh, light, um, this is the sun is just coming up, mist flowing from the uh, water, elephant drinking water there. This is, it's, it's, it's the light which is making the picture. The, the, the elephant is more or less in the center of the frame, guys, right? But it's the light which is making the picture more attractive. Uh, now, why is the elephant here? Why should it not be to the left? Because there is another herd of elephants on the right. I did not want to incorporate any more individual in the frame because my hero is this and my hero is the light. So that is a call you take. Okay, and be very honest with it. it. It shouldn't be just because you have to justify something. You cook up a story and say, oh, no, because there were elephants, I chopped it up. Be very honest with it and see, could you have done it? Because if you would have, you 100% would have. Right? If you could have, you would have. Another four or five slides, guys, and I'm done. Uh, moment stories. Look for uh, emotions. Look for storytelling images because uh, compositionally you moved. 
light is up to god uh, god delivers light um yeah, similarly this is something which is beyond your control if you see um action if you see emotional moments you you absorb that you take that picture because that is a far more compelling image than just moving around your focus points here and there right uh, a kamchutka brown bear it's massive bear uh, and a pup feeding on it now uh, we are flat on the ground in front of the um uh, a bear you know i'm at 142 mm guys you can realize how close it is uh, it's a different story that i have a massive 7 and a half the uh, 7 and a half would be exaggeration a 6 and a half foot russian um bodybuilder kind of an arm guard with us uh, and he's not afraid of the bears at all and the bears are not afraid of humans uh, because they only feed predominantly on salmon at that time of the year so it's pretty safe as long as you listen to the guide and you work around with him so he'll come and stop and he'll say okay next to me you can lay down so me and my guests are all flat on the ground beautiful light on the mother mama bear and the mama bear lifted her head she was actually looking at other bear coming out uh, there are instances where the mothers leave their babies next to humans because we all sit out in the open in the folded chairs to shoot the hunting uh, bears they at times leave them next to humans at a slightly distance and go and hunt because they don't want other bears to attack this is what our guide tells us i don't really know how far it's true but he says but very frequently mother bears will come bring the babies and leave them close by and go so it's a very tender moment so moment is what will make the picture beautiful than you working around anything else right so it's it's the action the same bear actually chasing summons and next moment is one ferocious character and jumping and catching fish and stuff like that so these are moments where you do not have to worry about where to compose how to compose it's the action that will make the picture now in this case it should have been slightly to the right maybe i don't know i uh, I, i preferred it keeping it at the center because action is happening you want your center of eye, uh, your eye to be going to the center and utilizing it a storytelling image where a tiger is stalking a deer uh, it's a young male tiger of course it bombed on him because it's sitting out in the open and he assumed that the deer will not see him of course the deer saw him and ran off uh, but uh, but no point zooming in and taking a picture uh, i'm using a 100 400 mm lens if i zoom in i can at 400 mm and take only the tiger but you're not telling the story you're missing out on the story itself you're missing out on what is happening around you right so that is uh, something i want you to be slightly aware of um this is with a 500 again a classical case of how and why would i crop off the animal less than 50% because i do not want to add more but it's uh, it, this is a gorgeous tiger she is no long, uh, she is no more now uh, she is called suki patiha and she had two cubs uh, very small cubs were really four month old cubs and uh, she was taking uh, they had just started eating meat and she was taking this small baby deer a fawn uh, to her cubs uh, so uh, i can build this story around it and it's a true story i'm not cooking it up i'm genuinely Uh, being honest about it so it could be a storytelling with the light a dappled light working on it makes it slightly intense so as i said it's it's more of a storytelling moment than me doing anything so there could be opportunities like this but i want you to nail it with every possible funda that you learned or heard of cropping and rule of third and all of that because it might help you uh, a similar case of um, a backlit shot uh, there are cluster of eggs on both sides of the leaf if you see and there is a spider there that spider is not going to hurt these eggs but he's there waiting for other critters to hunt on uh, so it, it is more of a storytelling image to me because there is there is some nest there are babies hatching here and there is a predator at the same like or an uh, inch away from you trying to hunt down something else so i would want to weave a story around it uh, two rat snakes combating uh, they they fight uh, to win over the right to mate uh, which means even if they have the potential to bite each other they don't they just wrestle they just push each other down so they they use each other's body to climb by as high as possible push each other down to win the writing uh, the mate to write uh, and they actually wrestle uh, so uh, now why would i want to make a vertical because it's calling out to be vertical why is this less foreground more background all of that we heard no all of that has to be done right but it's a story telling image at the end of the day and that is what will help you more um i'm assuming this is the last picture of the frame uh, of the uh, ppt uh, now this is a place called hunting palace in ranthambore uh, imagine guys people um, actually sat at this place and shot tigers this is the hunting palace this is where they used to sit there's a lovely lake in front of it they would wait for the tiger to come to the water and they would shoot it dead uh, and now is the time 
when tigers are breeding in that area they are mating this is a mating uh, couple um, uh, arrowhead and her mate and uh, it's like a they are the king and queen of that place now so it's amazing how you know 300 years ago or 400 years ago there would be people sitting there and shooting and today we have changed the world and there is some positivity and there is some story around it and stuff like that that i can sell yeah so that is all guys thank you so much for um uh, listening to me yap for so long I'm, i hope i did not bore you all uh, and it was a pleasure talking to you all thank you so much wow if there are any questions you. please leave it to us thank you sachin that was uh, a very educative and uh, you know a comprehensive uh, presentation i would say not anything else uh, you know even though a lot of us end up shooting you know we try to be cognizant of these things when right. we have a rise to the viewfinder somewhere yeah. those rules are out the window in the heat of the moment or right. you know like you said i it happened to us i think you know you start appreciating what is there without you know shooting that yeah. has also happened you know that, right. that that's the kind of the dichotomy of the situation most of the times well great wonderful so let us do one thing let us see sure. if we have some sure. questions and uh, nandan if you can roll them one by one but when, when, before nandan gets to it uh, yeah. just, just a quick one i you know i hear somebody asking me this a while ago mm -hmm. if you have an upcoming trip to a location which you have been planning for a while well, let's say mm -hmm. in masai or wherever you know, the galapagos or, or or any of these places where right. you know you're going to be there for let's say a significant chunk of time one week 10 days how do you right. practice anticipation to that trip if you can uh, talk about that Did you say how do you practice an anticipation? Yeah, how do you practice, right? I mean, yeah. Right. So, uh, I am of a very strong opinion um and I have often been quoted for this also, I don't know sarcastically also at times. Uh I don't think you can visualize and work around it. You cannot. You can't go to a place and say I want to come back with this picture. You you cannot because you don't know if it's going to happen. it is wild life at the end of the day you just don't know if it's going to happen what you can go with is inspirations saying i want to see uh, like uh, when i went to madagascar i wanted to see fusa fusa is okay. the only predator of madagascar it's it's a mongoose kind of an animal i have a picture I, unfortunately i did not put on this i want to see, i just wanted to see the animal yeah i have seen multiple pictures i i didn't ever very honestly mr shri not never said oh i want to see it on this beautiful tree and lovely light falling it no i just wanted to see the animal if i see the animal whatever opportunity arises in front of me i would want to do that simple okay. you can like uh, i don't know if you uh, you know uh, in madagascar the most classical picture that you know of is the ring tail lemur backlit shot and stuff like that right now you know you've seen it exactly so you know you've seen it and you know that if you get an opportunity you will make it but if you go with the agenda saying i want to make that picture you will be disappointed because any other opportunity you get you are still looking for that opportunity only you are still looking oh is there a backlit opportunity is there possible there for me to get the... why someone has produced it <laughs> you saw the picture and you were happy with it can you produce something else that someone else might inspire to take yeah yeah right? I mean, the reason so, for asking the question is that people have a predetermined set of notions before they make so the 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 flip side of the question that i want to ask you is don't go with preconceived notions just go with an open mind and be ready right so so i would want you to read out and watch as many pictures and videos of that place because youtube yeah. today is is amazing it it you you find kamchatka i've never made a video but look for kamchatka videos and you'll see kamchatka videos madagascar you can see madagascar videos if you want to view the place you would get a perspective of how the place is going to be so that you can be mentally prepared for certain thing that's it so that you know imagine i go to kamchatka and i never ask the guard if i can lay on the ground and take a picture i never ask the guard because i think it's not possible it's stupid or what why would i want to go flat on my stomach in front of a bear i'll get killed but if i know that that is a possibility then i'll at least ask otherwise i'm not even looking at that possibility Right. right so right. i'm saying that that i want you to read up as much and find out about the place before you go but don't go with a conception saying i am going to get the kamchatka bear catch a salmon 
if you get great but if you go there with only that mindset the the baby suckling on the mother though it's a brilliant moment you would still say you i didn't it. catching one man i still have missed that this is okay but i still didn't get that so so yeah yeah i totally agree with you i mean that's kind of uh, the, the 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 stigma that you have to get away from as a photographer Correct. more than Correct. anything else we can see with shots in your mind yeah nandan do we have already all right so starting with dev roy this came this question came at around 650 you know once you started your talk uh, uh-huh. <laughs> sir we prefer uh, we all prefer dx bodies which is obviously crop sensor body for wildlife can you please give us some insights on advantages of a full frame in wildlife i am planning to upgrade to uh, 20 fx with a 20 to 2 500 lens okay so uh, primarily a couple of things that a full frame can do Full frame ISO performance can be better than give you better depth of field than a crop. These are two major reasons why anyone would switch. These are the only two reasons. Okay. Everything else is manageable. Uh, megapixels is ma- manageable because at the end of the day, if you're going to post on Instagram, how does it matter, guys? It doesn't matter. Are you shooting 40 megapixels or 20 megapixels? It doesn't matter. But uh, uh, depth of field is a problem, then use it. High ISO performance is a problem, then uh, upgrade it. But otherwise, uh, the advantage of a cropped body is it will give you 1.5 times zoom, which is if you mount a 400 mm, you are getting 600 mm worth of output. Yeah. So if you are a bird photographer and you can't afford to buy a 500 mm lens, you buy a 75, 300, and you the 300 gives you 450 reach uh, on a cropped body. So I personally don't see a major reason for anyone to switch over from DX to FX. Unless they've made enough pictures with the DX and they think that they're going to take their photography a little to the serious hobby level, uh, not to the profession level, because no one's ever made a profession in our country. Uh, I do this. Uh, I teach people to earn my bread and butter. I can't sell my pictures um, uh, to uh, sustain myself. So it's very mm-hmm. tricky. Yeah. So, uh, so be, uh, if you want to make it as a serious hobby, you want to invest, you have the kind of money, go ahead. But uh, there is no major reason that I force you that you need to switch either, either that and make prints as well. I mean, if you want to print for your own, Absolutely. yeah, Absolutely. That, yes. you know, yes. dynamic is, print. If, if print megapixel is a matter, yeah, if megapixel is a reason, then you go for that and your print, because of depth of field and because of high eyes, basically the sensor is slightly better. It's like saying, I will take a picture with my phone versus a DSLR. Phone megapixel is going to be lesser. Of course, dynamic range could be slightly better, mm-hmm. but at the end of the megapixels are smaller. I may not be able to take a larger print. So for that reason, you can. But uh, if you haven't, then I would say give it another six months uh, because the mirrorless are the things. If you're a Canon guy, I would say switch to mirrorless now if you are planning to switch. But because you said FX and DX, I'm assuming you're Nikon guy. So just hang on. Nikon will come up with uh, something for you to switch to mirrorless. They do have they do have uh, the newer mirrorless, the, the 50, you know, the Z50. The yeah, Z5, but it's not, it's, uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not as great. When you compare it with Canon and Sony, it's not, unfortunately. Ooh, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, Canon is definitely ahead, though not because I'm a Canon maestro. Honestly, Canon is one notch ahead today than the other two brands. But they will catch up. It, it's it's a competition, guys. These three will keep going one one step ahead every six months. So uh, for now, I would say if you haven't, then don't have to. Uh, hang on for some time, but if you want to, they, yeah, absolutely, it's your money, your it's wish. Never, it's never about the gear, Sachin. It's never about yeah. the gear. You absolutely, know, that's gear. right. Yeah, but if you, but if you've exhausted enough, if you think, boss, you you've done it enough with the uh, DX and you have been dying to move to FX, so be it. But these are the only two, three reasons. Agree. So next question, and then I, you know, one more gear question. So is it an advantage to use one fifty to six hundred zoom lens so that we can click different perspectives of the image? So you have a wider zoom range. So sure. you have, uh, you, know, you know, advantage as far as, you know, using right. the So I'm assuming the question is, yeah, I'm assuming the question is a difference between a 150-600 versus a prime lens. Okay. Uh, yeah, yes, I I'm using a 500 mm and if the animal is too close, I'll have to crop it, which means uh, in the picture, I'll have to crop it. I'll have to omit certain parts. But if you have a, a zoom, you can compose brilliantly. It's absolutely worth it. Uh, but it also comes at the cost of depth of field uh, because 150-600 is a 6.3 lens. It's a smaller aperture, which means the depth of field is not going to be great, which means the animal is not going to pop out 
as much as you would wish to. Uh, um, second problem is because it's a smaller aperture, you're not going to have enough shutter speed because the light going in is lesser as opposed to a prime lens where it's, it's a bigger aperture. So if you are looking for action and uh, lovely depth of field, then it has to be prime. Uh, and you play around with whatever opportunity you get. It's simple as that. But if you are um, hardcore saying, I don't care about the depth of field, I don't care about the shutter, I'll always use a tripod, but I'm, I want precise composition, then yes. But what I do is I carry a 400 and I carry a 7200 so that I have a mix of both. But uh, yeah, but again, this is my bread and butter and I have to invest that kind of money to do that. Uh, if you don't want to, yes, a uh, 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 zoom lens is also okay. But if you have the money and then you have to take a chance, then I would say prime any day. Okay. So on separate bodies, obviously, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So Murli, uh, from, he's our uh, vice president of IPS. He talks, he takes says, great tips, Sachin. Can you give some tips on focusing okay. when subject is off center? Right. Uh, I'm very sorry. It said great. Uh, can you give focusing when, focusing when the subject is okay. off center? Okay. So, you know, so, focus and track. Yeah. Right. So, there are two ways to go about it. One is you move your focus point. Single point focus. You select the focus point. You move it to whichever corner. Use a continuous focusing, which is in Canon, it's called AI Servo. In Nikon, it's called AFC. Autofocus continuous. Uh, both do the same technology. Now use a single point focus and move around and see where you want to focus. That is one way. Uh, second is you could use back focus button also. If you are going to be into compositions and stuff like that, you can move to back focus, use the back focus button so that don't, you do not have to use the front focus at all. And you can compose however you wish between the two. That you can do. So, so I, th I think part of that uh, answer is also the fact that when you use the back button focusing method, you should remove okay. the focus of the trigger because you will conflict. Absolutely. Otherwise, uh, otherwise it's, it's useless okay. because you are, after you back focused, now you have overridden that by pressing the button. I've so seen people yeah. do it. That's why I'm saying it. Uh -huh, no. Yeah, that's that's given. That's common. That you'll have to switch the front one off, guys, because otherwise it will override that. Always. And with the newer equipment, I think yeah, the touch screens make sense. You know, when you go do you know bip 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 on the screen, it's a little Absolutely. bit more faster for a lot of guys. Yeah, yeah. In fact, in in the in the new Canon mirrorless, what I can do is I can assign two back focus buttons. So I can have the AEL, that is auto exposure lock, as a back focus. And I have AF on as back focus. Now, why do I want to? Because the focusing systems nowadays will also give me eye focus versus single point. So whenever I want the animal eye focus on, I can use this back focus. Whenever I want my single point focus, I use the other back focus. So it's it's super cool what technology can do today. True. Thank you. And then next one. How far are you happy with backlit, backlit wildlife images? So this is Mr. Sharma from uh, the Telangana Photography Society. I, I know Mr. Sharma very well. Uh, good evening, Mr. Sharma. Uh, nice to hear from you. How happy am I with backlit? Uh, I uh, I am uh, very, very kicked about um, slightly. Um, um, how do I put it? Let me rephrase the sentence. Uh, for a long, long time, people did not see the potential of backlit images. Uh, when I say did not see the potential, they did not realize it is possible uh, because in India, it is still difficult to do backlit pictures. There are very few images. You can do good backlit images in Kaziranga, Kobet, Kanha, where there are grasslands, Tal Chapar, um, uh, places where there are grasslands, where Vedavadar. Sorry, while I speak, I am thinking of which all places. So it's very difficult to do a backlit in Kabini. It, it's yeah. a dense forest. The light is not going to the sun. Uh, once it hits the ground, the sun is already up there, right? So it, it's, it, it's very tricky. Uh, but once you see the potential, you would want to take that opportunity. But this opportunity, unfortunately, in India is only very few places, unless you're using macro where you're using the torchlight or the flashlight to work around. But um, it has great potential because it's a very, very uh, compelling image. You, you in sincerely, instantly connect with uh, lovely all yellow orange pictures. No? You, uh, all viewers connect with it. True, 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 true. So Devanshu Roy says, uh, please share your thoughts on post-processing. This is your strong point, Sachin. Uh, you <laughs> uh, 
Okay, this um, I, I I use the word uh, sentence earlier. Salt as per taste. Namak swad anusar. Um, why? Firstly, ask yourself why do you need processing? If you're happy with the pictures as they are, be happy. Uh, mm. I personally think that my sensor is not equipped to see or show me the same colors that I saw. That's all. Okay. I want to when my when I saw the fresh sal leaves, they were much vibrant green, man. But when I looked at my picture, I was shooting in auto white balance. It bloody made it bluish tinge because I was shooting in auto white balance. Then I okay. Then I decided to shoot in daylight white balance. Then it made everything red. So how do I decide what is the correct color for me that I saw? For that, I would want to process. I'm not asking you to make a ochre tiger look blue. I'm not asking you to make a blue tiger. I'm only asking you to get the ochre back. I'm just asking you to get the yellow of the tiger back. That is all. But yes, there are people today. Uh, there are a lot of people on Instagram who are phenomenal in a different kind of processing where they uh, they manipulate image so much that it creatively looks so phenomenal. Uh, that is art. That is genuinely, and some of them are very very good. And it takes. Uh, it takes another level to be that creative to be able to process that. Trust me, I say it because I earned my bread and butter uh, using Photoshop before I switched my career. I was a web designer for a long time. I've sustained all my life on Photoshop. Uh, but you have to be really creative to think and to be able to execute what you've thought. So some kids are very, very talented, but it completely depends on an individual. What do you want to do? I, uh, for me, post-processing is only and only about Enhancing the image to the taste that I saw it this way, and I want to bring it to that. That is all. I keep it to that. I Most think of it. Any, on, on that subject, I think if you can spend a minute on explaining what your thought process was on the elephant, the, the Corbett and the elephant with the blue, uh, light blue haze. Right, right. So uh, if you if you realize uh, a white balance can be very, very, very super feature to play with. Uh, color balance, particularly if you bring it to your computer, you can actually increase and play around with the saturation of every individual color. So it, it is super cool if you can work with the fundamental of RGB versus CMYK. That is red, green, blue channel and cyan, magenta, yellow, black channel. That is how printing works. Any any book that you see, that people would have used CMYK. Uh, now, if you understand this, then you realize that cyan is the opposite of red, which means if you increase red, you are by default reducing cyan. So cyan is sky blue, C-Y-A-N, okay? So cyan, magenta, yellow, red, green, blue. Each of them are opposite to each other. So magenta is opposite of green. So if you know just these three logic, then you can play around with your processing very easily. And you know that when, you, have you heard of casts? You say, oh, this picture has a purple cast. This picture has a blue cast, right? Those casts are because your sensor saw or was overwhelmed with that color. So you can reduce that or enhance that when you process the picture and say, this is where my uh, uh, threshold of vibrancy lies for me. I like it this way and I work on it. The other Q-tip that uh, when we used to design websites, what we used to do is we would never process more than three to four pictures in a row. Never. Because your eye gets so tuned to the computer that you start seeing wonky colors. So we used to count till 30, 30 seconds, cup your eyes count to 30, take it out and look at your picture again and say, oh shit, there is still a blue cast here. You, you, because your eye gets used to it. So walk around, go to a darker room, come back, sit on the process. So uh, treat your, uh, so for me, you know, uh, if I go to a place and I make 3000 images, I'm looking at only 20, 25 images out of it, right? But those 20, 25 images, I want to treat it with respect. I want to see, watch it as many times to realize, hey, what is the potential? What is it that I could, I, I made a mistake. What is it that I could have done? Could I have zoomed out and zoomed in? I'm not saying only processing. These 20 you selected and say, oh, these are superb. But are they superb? Malab, is there any scope of improvement? Okay. Uh, now, if I bring it to the processing table, is there a processing uh, enhancement that I can do? Can I add something else? Can I use the dodge and burn tool? And uh, there was a twig which I unnecessarily added. I did not even pay attention to it, but it's blown out. Can I darken it in Photoshop? Can I do that? So that if you think about it, every picture slightly respectfully, uh, it will come to you automatically. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, Nandan. So Babu G.S. Rao asks a question, sir, your thoughts on the priority 
shoot and compose or compose and shoot? It's an interesting question. Shoot and composer. Uh, oh, you mean, what's can what's I bring it to my... Uh, yeah. So, uh, you're asking, should I bring it to my computer and crop it, compose it, or should I compose in the field and shoot? Definitely compose in the field. As a photographer, you have to learn to miss out. Uh, guys, it's a painful process. You will miss out on shots. You will. Yeah, but, will ask yeah. Yeah, but if you, once you get a hang of it, then your hit rates are far better. What is the point of having that kind of a megapixel? And now you're saying I'll have to omit 25% of the megapixel because I've cropped it. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Now, again, it depends on what you're going to do with it. If you if your final output is only Instagram, then so be it. You can do whatever. But Correct. my recommendation to all my clients and guests and students always is learn to compose in the field. Learn to compose in the field. It's okay to miss out shots. But once you get a hang of how to move the focus points and how to expose, uh, uh, you will be able to make far better pictures. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I mean, especially moving your fingers uh, when you are uh, right. looking at something is, is right. a muscle memory that you have to develop over a period right. of time. It doesn't Correct. come easy, but it does come. Once it, once it right. comes, then you'll be very comfortable. Correct. So the answer is compose and shoot. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. Yeah, okay, thank please. You. Nandan, what Lakshmi Narasimha asks, what is your opinion on hide photography, obviously, uh, and, and, used, uh, and using feed for baiting birds predominantly or animals in some cases? I don't know, Lakshmi. It, it is um, it's a very tricky subject to tread on without uh, knowing where and what we are talking about. Certain places... Uh, uh, like Costa Rica, they put those nectar feeds everywhere in the property, everywhere, even in someone's house, it's hanging there. So then it's like putting a saucer with water outside your gallery. That is what, because there they don't put sugar water. They're just giving water. Then okay. some properties will add uh, because there has to be component of sugar and water. Also, you can't have 90% sugar, 10% water. It's like a sticky thing. The, the, the hummingbird will be stuck in that feed. So there is a component of say 5% sugar and 95% water just to add a little bit of thing. So that is, is probably okay. But if you butcher a, a, a buffalo and feed it to a tiger because you want to show it to a tourist, maybe it's not okay. I don't know who decides. Uh, I, I think baiting, that is why uh, it all of it, no, very sorry, because I, I'm, I'm thinking uh, in various steps. No, I, I, all no, all of this boils down to our personal ethic at the end of the day. Uh, you draw your line and you say, hey, I'm not comfortable with this. Uh, somehow something is not right. Now, if you disagree with it, I would very strongly recommend you to go back and read about it as much as possible before making an opinion about it. That is all I would request. Because a lot of us just randomly blame random things because we have the liberty to. That is trolling, very honestly. Uh, if you if you don't know if it is actually going to affect the animal or the bird, if there is research done and it says that it is not okay, then don't do it. Like yeah. using flash on frogs. I don't know if it is okay. I personally do not like to use it as much. I yeah. personally do not take pictures of froglets with flash. Never. I have not posted one picture of a froglet with the flash. Because I personally don't think it is good. But scientifically, it's not been proven. No one has ever said that popping a flash on a frog's eye will make it blind. No one has ever done a study. You, you draw the line. I, I personally think it's a small kutti thing. It just come into the world. It, it tries to see in the night and some bugger keeps popping the flash. It's like, buzz, who are you? <laughs> so I, I somehow feel uh, it's slightly uncomfortable there. But, but that's stupidity. That's my stupidity. I can't go and no, treat it. I can't because I don't know if it is right. Yeah, but each to his own. I mean, you know what? Exactly. I mean, you know, having exactly. done, having exactly. done this, and and done research or reading about it, you Precise. should know what the limits are to a certain extent, right? Exactly. So baiting, if you realize, most of the award 
uh, 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 most of the people who give awards on photography will not entertain it. Exactly. exactly. Nesting. Exactly. Like a lot of people tag me and say, sir, how is this picture? And they take a picture of a bird on a nest. And I say, I do not want to give you a feedback on this because I don't want people to do this. Nesting, ne though you might have taken enough precautions and not damage the bird nest at all. You might have. I respect that. But there is a majority population who do not know that they are damaging. They don't understand. It's it's more of a problem where people do not realize. Like Lakshmi, I don't know if baiting is good or not. But I know that somehow it doesn't ring a bell in my head saying it is okay. And hence, I stay away with it. But uh, there are places where people put um, um, uh, insects to attract birds. Like Thailand and all, they work only on that. And it's, it's okay everywhere. A lot of people flock there to see that bird. Because otherwise, you'll not be able to see that bird at all. So if you want to see and take a picture of that, you go there and you put the mealworms and you take picture. Thailand, uh, birding survives only on that bird, uh, uh, bird tourism. So I am not sure if it is okay, not okay. But if I read up and I know it, like nesting birds, we know it is not okay because we might go overboard and da create damage. So there I would very strongly recommend not to do it. But in other things, frog, flash and bird feed, I am not sure if it is going to hamper the animal. I don't do in most of the cases, but I do in some cases also. Like Costa Rica, I go and I, I shoot uh, flowers where they inject sugar water so that the bird can come there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I think each by each to his own problem. Right. Okay, Chandru uh, asks a question. Will the wider perspective score? Oh, okay. In photography salons. Oh. I know you don't participate. So. I am not someone who is into salons at all. I'm very sorry. I am just not into salons. I I am very sorry. Uh, I may not be able to answer this with all honesty uh, because I, I I don't know anything about salons. Sorry. Okay. No, no issues. Chandra, I think this is a this is a question for discussion in our you know, internal forums. <laughs> we will do. Right. Okay. Next question. How much importance would you place on monitor calibration? Ajit asks. Uh, especially for post processing, absolutely. Hi, Doc. Good to hear from you. Uh, 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 calibration is important, Doc, uh, because uh, it, it's like it's like watching something on Samsung Galaxy versus iPhone. Samsung Galaxy is like another world colors. God knows what vibrant colors it brings. God knows what it colors. So if I post something on Instagram using my Apple. And I look on Samsung, it looks drab. It's like, well, where are the colors? Yeah. <laughs> so, so it looks, it's very uh, slightly weird. That's why I think it's important. Or best is use a Mac because Mac is close to what uh, printing is. Uh, so if you can uh, get a Mac, it's, it's good. But if, uh, again, if you are going to be posting pictures online, then just looking at Mac will not work because then you'll have to convert it into an sRGB and increase the saturation a tad bit while posting images. Like Instagram, that's why Instagram gives you filters on the phone itself, uh, which is what I do most of the times. I process on my computer, uh, airdrop it to my phone, and on my phone, I increase the saturation a little more when I post it on, on the Instagram tool yeah. uh, because uh, I realize that my uh, it, it looks otherwise very drab. But I would say um, either get a monitor calibrator or get a uh, MacBook Pro, uh, it, it works. So I ha I have a point because I'm you know I have three screens in front of me uh, you know okay. my calibrated BenQ and I right. have an older right. screen here and a laptop and I'm looking at various feeds okay. you know the my the shirt on your color and my shirt and then the background is totally exactly, different yeah. Yeah. but yeah. I know yeah. this calibrated monitor is true to its uh, color you know yeah. that's that's yeah. the advantage but I, you know especially the point that you made about color casts and when yeah. people complain yeah. can be taken care of easily on a calibrated monitor. Yeah. Also, if you realize, uh, uh, to Doc also, Doc, uh, it matters what your output is. Yeah, you need to color cool. calibrate largely because if you want to get into prints. Yeah. If you don't want to get into prints, then any device, whatever you think you look, you just have to saturate a little more. Most of the people's phone cameras, it looks superb. So it doesn't matter. Uh, you may, actually, there are times when I cringe looking at my picture. Then, boss, what have you done? Why have you increased the saturation so much? But then you realize boss, the world is going to see my Instagram. And there it needs to be slightly more saturated. And the one more point, which I think you should reiterate what you made, right? When you are looking at the picture, say, again, same picture for a while, you need yeah. to take your eyes off, look yeah, at yeah, some yeah. greenery yeah. and come back in. The Absolutely. same thing. If you are posting to internet, 
just don't yeah. ever look at those pictures ever again on a regular screen. Just yeah. keep them away. You look at yeah. it on your phone, don't look at it on your monitor. I hope that answers your questions, Doc. Next question, Nandan. Devanshu Roy asks, I want to grow my skills in wildlife photography. Do you suggest sticking with a single genre, i.e. wildlife photography, or grow my skills in other genres too, keeping wildlife as my prim primary genre? Right. That's a long so, question. But I mean, right. There was a good question, but it completely depends on what is the end goal. If the end goal is going to be a career switch, then I would say look at other genres also. Because I often tell people that if you want to make your career in photography, uh, pick up fashion, product, wedding, any of those genres where there is good money, earn from that, you're still photographing. You're still using your camera and your lens and you're satiating your lust. You, you make money from that and that money you spend in wildlife. Because uh, a wise old man said that if you ever want to make money from wedding photo uh, from wildlife photography, yeah. sell your equipment. That is the only way you can make money <laughs> in wildlife photography. So uh, if, if that is a career switch, then yes. If it is not, if it's a serious hobby, stick to wildlife because wildlife is so such a large domain because there is macro, there is wide angle, there is still shift, there is zoom lens, there is prime lens. Uh, there is so many things that you can do. Uh, like uh, if you, I would very strongly recommend guys go back and uh, uh, watch uh, Mr. Girish's talk yesterday. Uh, within macro, there is so much that you can actually go and shoot. And that is what attracted me to get into macro. Uh, um, it's fascinating that he has that collection from that smaller place. So uh, there is never a dearth of subjects in wildlife, never. Are you okay with that subject is the question. Are you okay with the moth or a fly or a frog? Or are you still obsessed about tigers and elephants? Then there is a problem. If when you talk about wildlife, if you're okay with everything under the sun, then there is no stopping you. You are, The world is out there for you. I think it takes a while to converge upon something that you become passionate about also, right? I mean, yeah. you could try multiple things and then right. you'll realize that you're good in one. Either it is yeah. genres of photography or even specific to wildlife, in, within wildlife, you, you will kind of know what you gravitate towards over a period yeah. of time. Yeah. You know? okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Check in. Nandan? Okay. Nandan says we are done with Q&A. Very okay, good. I have to show the winning image. I think we come to the point where you have to showcase the image that won the first prize. Right, right. Guys, here it is. Mr. Arun Kumar NK has won the first place in the animal section. Um, he calls it elephant dust. Um, uh, it, it's uh, elephant actually raising dust to put it on its back. It's a beautiful uh, backlit picture, lovely execution of light underexposed, placement is all right, but overall, uh, it's a very, very impactful image when you look at it. So great job done, Mr. Arun Kumar. All the very best, and I hope you make lots of more pictures like this. Very well deserved. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Arun. Uh, you know, since this was uh, part of the, I think, you know, some of the tips that you talked about today, some of the points that you made are captured in that picture, especially the back right. portion, okay. you, know, you know, definitely, you know, comes into play. Uh, so I think we've come to the end of our show. We are good on time. So Sachin, appreciate yes. your time more than anything else. I think it was a very insightful and a very, you know, kind of like a very precise and, a, you know, like I said, a, a, a well-composed uh, orchestra. I think uh, both your images, your explanation and the way you put that, it shows, you know, you've been teaching for a while. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Srinath. My pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's always cool to connect with uh, a larger audience and uh, uh, talk about the same passion that we all share at the end of the day. Uh, it brings us all immense pleasure and pride to be associated in the same umbrella of photography. That too, a smaller umbrella of wildlife photography. So thank you so much all uh, for sharing the passion. Yeah, Have a good evening. Before we sign out, you know, just a small quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. Mm -hmm. He says, "Adopt the pace of nature. Our secret is our patience." Right. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. you know, it, 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 it's very apt, especially when you're composing and talk about yeah. composition. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be in a hurry. Just take exactly. your time, exactly. put yeah. your thoughts yeah. together, and then you know, right. then take your image. Right. Thank right. you, Sachin. Right. Thank you very much on behalf of YPS and the entire audience across 
both the platforms. Thank you so much. We wish you the very best and we look forward to being on your tour soon. Uh, Absolutely. Hang on at the back end. We will come back to you once I close up uh, the session here with a couple of housekeeping. Sure, sure, sure. So for those of you uh, uh, who are interested, these are the points of contact for Sachin uh, on email, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, as well as own website, uh, www.sachinlive.com. Now, coming back to uh, a couple of uh, uh, our uh, housekeeping and uh, notices. Next week, again, I want to remind you of Visual Stories by Ashok Mansoor. Uh, so this is going to be on the 11th of October at 5.30 p.m. Uh, you will be ready. You, you will have a visual treat, especially his landscapes uh, that Ashok comes up with. Uh, you will definitely not uh, be disappointed uh, you know, in this session. And uh, last but not least, uh, day seven of our uh, wildlife uh, uh, week is going to be concluding next, tomorrow evening at 5.30 we're going to end this with uh, Praveen Purohit and the four piece of uh, photography. So stay tuned for Praveen Purohit tomorrow and catch you all at 5.30 p.m. Till then, have a good night and stay safe. Bye-bye.